hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hersha. Mark Hersha. Thank you for the intro, Bill Haywatt. And hello, listener friend. It's me, Mark Hersha, executive producer and every other weekly co host of Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast. You are here for episode 326, and so am I, where we have special guest Dana Carvey returning, and we're going to talk about his new soundcast that's just about to drop. But more on that in a moment. In case you missed last week's Epi 325 of the show, hosted by my unparalleled every other weekly co-host and counterpart Tyson Saner, it was a fantastical half hour that included a triple shot sampling of soundcasts. The episode was entitled, They Can't All Be Comedy, and the clips were from the likes of Word in Your Ear, Going Deep, and Bubble. And see that first one on the list, Word in Your Ear, that's a music-oriented soundcast. Because although we tout ourselves as the comedy soundcast soundcast, sometimes we let ourselves stray from the format because, well, that's what we do. If that pisses you off, you can go listen to, oh, that's right, there is no other comedy soundcast soundcast. So, enjoy. As I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself, my special guest this week is none other than Dana Carvey. You know him from his years on NBC's Saturday Night Live, the short-lived but amazing The Dana Carvey Show, Garth from Wayne's World, the feature film The Master of Disguise and others, comedy specials, and of course, from here, Succotash, where he's been a recurring special guest since we first started in 2011. Heck, he was our very first guest back in episode three. In our chat, I say he visited us a couple years ago, but in reality, it was just back in February of this year. And now he's back. And for a special reason. Last time he was on, he talked about the soundcast he'd started with fellow SNL alumnus David Spade called Fly on the Wall, where they interview guests who are either part of the SNL cast or crew, or else were hosts or musical guests. It's been doing really well, and they're not only going to do another season of their shows, but there may even be a spin-off companion show to that. Shh, no one knows about that. But not satisfied with slicing off that corner of Soundcast land, Dana is working with his sons, Dex and Tom Carvey, and their friend Julian to create a scripted comedy soundcast. It's called The Weird Place, and it's kind of a Looney Tunes tweak of a kind of a Twilight Zone concept, and it's going to be dropping very soon, on Halloween Day, to be exact. We talk all about it. So here's what I'm going to do to set the table for you. First, we'll play a little one-minute teaser that they've done for The Weird Place. Then I will play an ad from our fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants, and their Deathly Hallowear, just in time for Halloween. And then we'll go right into my chat with Dana. Sound good? Let's go. Introducing The Weird Place, a scripted audio sci-fi comedy adventure featuring time travel, aliens, pirates, and the supernatural. Don't believe me? Take a listen. Hang on, people. We're going for a ride. You know my desires. Do my bidding. They must have gold to bruise. Eat this. Got the rope around his neck. I see you got yourself in a predicament. Put down the hash pipe, Sparky, it's called a submarine. Why do I feel so relaxed? It's quite obvious. They are from the future. It's going to be a welcome surprise for the local villagers. <laughs> Fire away! Initiate launch. Well, that's show business. Welcome to the weird place. Available wherever you get your podcast. Ghosts and goblins, Frodo and Spider-Man, and lots and lots of slutty nurses all wandering the streets can only mean one thing. No, not Fleet Week. It's Halloween. This special time every year, Henderson's restocks the shelves and interwebs with our Deathly Halloween. 
more than just a pair of pants and yet not quite a full-blown costume, Henderson's Deathly Hallowear is meant to be worn under your disguise to make sure your Halloween stays safe, sane, and filled with treats. The wizards at Henderson's Tailoring Factory start with a thin yet comfy layer of 100% cotton lining. Stitched to that is a second layer, this one made from 70 mil thick military grade Kevlar. Finally, your Deathly Hallowear is coated with waterproof matte black acrylic, strong enough to keep you safe in the darkest night, whether it's hailing hail or bullets. Henderson's Deathly Hallowear is also light enough to assure that you can keep tricking and treating until the cows come home. Moms and dads, Henderson's wants to remind you that not even our Deathly Hallowear can guarantee complete protection from the low lives and scumbags that are waiting to prey on your precious children. It can't detect razor blades and apples, or roofies and rollos. So when you steal your kids' candy while they sleep, be extra careful and take a good look at what you're biting into before it bites into you. Henderson's Deathly Hallowear was originally designed for Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and Michael Myers. Not the unstoppable killing machine from the Halloween movie franchise, but that unstoppable mugging machine from Wayne's World. That's Henderson's. Fine trousers and costumery since 1549. And now back to Suckatash. With me now is Dana Carvey rejoining us uh, on Suckatash after, uh, I don't know, when was the last time you were on? A couple of years ago? Something like that. Suck a who? Tash or what? I think you were just, uh, maybe it was sooner than that. I think you guys were just about to start doing uh, Fly on the Wall, you and David Spade. I think so. How many times have I been on Suck a who? Tash or what? Th- I think I think you've been on seven times, I want to say. I haven't yeah. counted, but I'll go I'll go back and count after this, but I think seven or eight. Who wow, this is probably my most visited podcast and as a guest. Pro- and you're probably our most visiting guest. So it all works out. Ha. Huh. Huh. Imagine that. Do they know we wrote two movies together? <laughs> I I don't know. We may have talked about it before. I yeah, Mark Hershon and I wrote two feature films together. They're very, very funny. They're still yes. out there. Yeah, somebody will see them someday if we ever get them made. One day, you'll see. Suck a who, Tasha what? I kind of like that. <laughs> if you ever do like a, you know, a companion <laughs> podcast, you know. Suck, suck a who, Tasha what? Yeah, I like it. Do Hashaway, and it's all just ex-SNL cast members. Talking yes. About podcast. So. Well, first of all, uh, good, to talk, good to talk to you. H- happy to have you back. Good um, to be back. Although the... Uh, the listening audience doesn't know, but we we actually communicate fairly frequently, which is yeah. always uh, good to keep in touch. Yep. Uh, and you mentioned companion podcast, which is interesting because you have a brand new podcast or soundcast, as we still try to make people I, say it here on Soundcast on on Suckatash. Suckatash Soundcast, yeah. But you have a, a new new soundcast about to drop, as they say. Yes. It is a, I think the official vernacular is scripted comedy podcast. Ah, okay. I've been using comedy narrative podcast sometimes when I talk about that sort of genre, but I think you're right. I think scripted well, comedy makes sense. I think it's, it's such a new feel. You know, it goes back to old timey radio, 1948, the shadow knows. So now we are, are full circle. So you... <laughs> You also are really good at naming and branding things. So you'll probably, that'll probably what it'll be known after this podcast gets out. That's right. That's <laughs> but, right. But yes, we, it, it started a long time ago. How much time is it? We got, <laughs> we got plenty of time, plenty uh, of time. I've got it down to a pretty good science. So basically the core essence of it was me being a twilight zone fan Mm. And me having two sons. So me, me go get, and this is the nineties VHS tapes, or it would be DVDs of all, all twilight zones. So they watch it and their friends watch it. And it's, it, it's kind of, it's not, it's sort of PG. I don't know, but it's dark. It's twisted. It's, you know, the yeah. brilliance of it connected with them and their friend, Julian Metalich, who was living next door. So flash years later, and we're, we're doing a twilight, zone type short film again tom my son tom carvey came up with the idea that a heavy metal band 
that part of their lyrics is come to me, Satan, come <laughs> Satan. and Satan does actually arrive. So we thought, well, what a great notion, you know? So we made a short film about that. The band's name was Solstein and we would brush it up a little bit and, and we could actually release it online. Uh, we started without a script and we only had the crew interstitially and we had all these barriers, but we kept going and going and going, learned a lot, did a lot of crazy stuff. Peter Galky played the, the person who turns into the devil. So, <laughs> yeah, I remember this. I re yeah, so I remember saying this. Yes. Yeah, we shot it in one location. We did a lot with it. And the latest thing I saw, you know, when you don't look at something for a year, you kind of go, hey, that's pretty good. I mean, that's interesting. Hmm. You know, it's, it's very homemade and it's very rough. So anyway, so that project was set aside for a while. And then um, we were thinking of making a series. I think we we're going to call it the creepy box or something, but we wanted to still, we we're still ambitious about doing us something with the twilight zone. Yeah. And eventually we found our way to the notion that the spirit of Rod Serling actually Rod and the vibe of Rod was necessary Mm. to the to the template uh, or the sensibility of a new Twilight Zone. And you've got Black Mirror and Jordan Peele, all this kind of brilliant stuff out there. But we yeah. wanted to go back to the early 60s. So we ended up teaming up my very good friend. He, he needs a friend. I am his friend. Conan O'Brien's company, Team Coco. <laughs> they love the idea. And we teamed up with them. Coincidentally, they had a deal with HBO Max who owned Warner Brothers. So they had access to the Warner Brothers Library of Music. Good so heavens. It was a treasure trove. And you've heard some of the stuff. <laughs> I have. It's that amazing. It's 50s, 60s. Yeah. <laughs> you, symphonic. And what's interesting, not to interrupt, but the young people love it too. They love the emotionality of it or the vibe of it. So we had the music and we had Team Coco. We took it to Audible. They were like, what? You know? So... <laughs> We decided we've we've done it with with uh, Team Coco, Conan O'Brien's company. We did it during the pandemic, and uh, we the notions, the three basic ideas we're working from were were Tom's again. He just mm -hmm. is a, is really steeped. I was just watching Stargate with him. He's seen every you know, so um, <laughs> so we started like last year uh, around September and we learned that we didn't know how to do it. Mm. Uh, we, we were so excited that people sounded like they're in a pirate ship, <laughs> we, you, know, <laughs> you know, and then we play it for you and my wife. And I could tell that people were just a little zoned out, like kind of, okay. So we kept interesting redoing it and we did it homemade within our own little world because we kept going oh no we got to do this we got to do that and finally we realized clarity is king mm -hmm. uh, you can have a question in a second clarity is king because it's not 1948 when you're listening to the, ra the radio in kansas out on the kansas plains in the middle of the night there's nothing else to do so it's not a captive audience. So we we that helped with Rod as our narrator or kind of a, a character of Rod. I'm not exactly doing Rod Serling, but I'm doing a Rod type voice, a guy who takes us through it. And then we also, Dex Carvey and Julian Madelich went downtown with the, the effects and the music. So I realized too that the audio candy, even without any storyline, was a really important companion to the actual storyline and the characters. So we kept making it more intense and lush and kept redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. And now it drops Halloween. Perfect. And it's called yeah. The Weird Place. Yeah. You know, it was The Twilight Zone. It's a slightly comedic bent. So it's a, it's it's intentionally sort of bad. <laughs> the Twilight <laughs> Zone is incredibly cool. The Weird Place is a little bit, you know, on the bubble of, of that. Yeah. The Weird Place, anywhere where you find podcasts, you will be able to put in The Weird Place into Google or Yahoo uh, and on Halloween day morning, and you will then see this presented to you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Having uh, having been given uh, a preview of your debut episode and several other bits and pieces, uh, I do have to say the music is really great. And I think one of the things, as you were mentioning, sort of that throwback to old radio was, you know, people just don't have the time or resources to have a lush studio, you know, orchestra 
uh, playing yeah. these music cues anymore in today's yeah. modern thing. And they don't even think about it. You know, they get a, yeah. one, one person with a synthesizer who can make it, you know, the sound of all the other instruments, but it never comes across like that great old studio music did. Yeah. So that's something that's an interesting element in here uh, on top of just the, the general weirdness that the plot has going for it. Um and then yeah, there's the I mean, I, I feel like just to put you in this a little bit is the two movies we wrote together had a, a similar kind of frequency, not identical, but I don't know what you really call it. It's very character driven. I don't know. How would you describe it? Uh, yeah, because I mean, they're both comedies uh, and the, the, the second one, the one with the monsters in it, um, there's literally, you know, probably no jokes on the page, as they like to say. It, no. the, the humor all comes from the <laughs> characters and their interactions together, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it's kind of hard to shop it. Right. Because most executives, they really want to see the jokes pop off the page. They want to be able to say them. And uh, it's kind of important to even hear what those characters sound like before you launch into reading the script, because they're very definitive. Uh, a thousand percent. It's not it. It's a different style. And, you know, uh, people who write screenplays with great jokes on the page and you kind of see it with these. Yeah, you have to hear it. That's why we've always thought about having a read through with that. But yeah, and we we yeah. have we have character types in mind for, you know, the various people, mm -hmm. not so much who would play them, although, you know, we certainly have ideas, but we also didn't want the dialogue in the page to look like it was written in some specific style, like, oh, that's a so-and-so type person. Right. So, so the dialogue is also very straight because we know what it's supposed to sound like, but we didn't want to kind of dummy it up on the page and have people go, this is like a mockery of somebody's voice or something. So, yeah. Um, it has a musicality to it. If there's mm -hmm. any kind of style that I like to do it's that the the humor is sort of just in the character and in the rhythm of it so that i i love that screenplay and i i love this project because uh i still think it's in its infancy i don't think any scripted comedy podcast has really popped yet and i think because the monetary uh paradigm I went to state school uh, <laughs> is is intellectual property. You do not have enough runway unless you were doing 10, 22 minute episodes. But we kind of ended up making it like an album. I'm not saying it's a good album or a bad <laughs> album, but it's 90 minutes of 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 fun. It's and a sense of fun about it. And uh, and then it has the companion um, talk show called the <laughs> Weird, where they talk about the three primary ideas and then you get to meet some of the actors, voice actors. And, and the, all, some of them are quite musical. <laughs> <laughs> Even when we did the talking weird, which was outside the primary episodes, we realized just having Rod interview people was a little flat because the sound yeah. was so lush. So we <laughs> ended up giving the characters some songs and there, there might be some <laughs> animals running around just to keep it it's intensity going. But well, that's what's, that's the other thing that's so genius about it is the idea of having this companion element to it. <laughs> that, that is, uh, you know, something that's usually an afterthought that after something's been on the air for a couple of years, they go, Hey, let's do one of these interview things. But this comes kind of all sort of prepackaged, <laughs> prepackaged. <laughs> it's, I know it's, uh, we hope people will watch it in sequence. What you would click on I think first is an episode called Pirates versus Submarine. Again, it's intentionally just an awkward, <laughs> bald-faced, perfunctory concept, but it's about uh, a nuclear submarine 1960s, circa 1966, goes in an underwater time portal, surfaces, and there's a, it's 1738, and they interact with a pirate ship. So there's that first tease, and that's a two-parter, yeah. uh, like 14 minutes each, and then you'll roll into the talk show. You'll meet some of the voice actors from the pirate. So that's your first quadrant. The second one is uh, called Cute Little Alien. And it's one episode of about 17 minutes. And it's about an alien that's um, kind of ordered Colonel Belot's his name to go to Earth <laughs> and gets an Earthling to help him make a bomb. And so he finds this very sweet elderly woman who's hard of hearing <laughs> and befriends her and convinces her that what he eats are bomb making material. So <laughs> do you have any ammonium nitrate? 
Ammonium <laughs> nitrate, what y'all want that for? To eat. <laughs> so that's that's that thing. It's a little more comic frequency. But in all the episodes, we have some sentimentality very quickly. There's certain, mm-hmm. it's not serious, but it's kind of, you know, it's like in the pirate episode where the ensign and, and Captain McKinley, people are going, oh, we don't know these characters, you know, kind of <laughs> they apologize for their, their little, you know, dust up early yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and then you would get um, a talking weird after a cute little alien where you meet the characters. Some, sometimes the voice actors sound exactly like the characters and are similar to the characters they play. And sometimes they're quite different. And then the final one is the globe, which may be, the most purely kind of old fashioned twilight. Zone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. another two parter. And um, it was Tom's notion. Again, a man touches a globe. He gets this beautiful globe. He touches it and it affects the real world, you know? Yeah, so very, tw- very twilight zone, very twilight <laughs> zone. He's kind of stuttering and insecure. There's a love interest and there's, there's some bullies that harass him. He gets all this incredible power, goes power mad very quickly, but the globe <laughs> is very powerful, does all this stuff. And that gets the girl back. And that one, um, you know, who knows, you know, I, they're all, they're all like children in a way. I like them all for different reasons, but yeah. it's, uh, and then that it has its uh, companion piece of talking weird. So it's a 90 minute, in one felt swoop, but you never have to be on it for more than 14 minutes. Basically you can watch it incrementally, watch yeah. it. I mean, watch listen, it. yeah. And <laughs> you know, just to insert this for a second, the premise of this is the positivity of it is in audio podcasting. You can say a thousand spaceships appear in the sky and they do, you know, yes. so this is about how do you imagine? That's why we intentionally, did not really describe the characters too much. We described the pirates a little bit, but not in specific, because uh, it's like, how do you see Cycle Bill? How do you see the cute little alien? You know, so that's right. that. Yeah, use your imagination. Yeah, again, the theater of the imagination, which was the great thing about old radio. Uh, people mm-hmm. were, were rarely described, uh, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Uh, certain situations were described, right? Yeah. Or, or places or things, but usually the people you were left to your own imagination what that person would look like, which is uh, kind of a great throwback you guys are doing. Yeah. So we, we don't know or put pressure on it. It became a, a labor of love. We went a little mad with it, as you know, is kind of, I do that a lot. Like we did with uh, the happy idiot and yeah. idiots and monsters. We were two screenplays had idiots in the title. Yeah. <laughs> and they were, and they were connected by a couple of different, by yeah, one character. Were. No, there were actually a couple of characters that were in both of those pieces. Yeah. Oh. which is hilarious and we did an, that audio version of the happy idiot one that was uh that was the intensive one the, <laughs> where... well i did think because with the great paul wright it was an audio engineer and everything else friend of ours we did we we read that script and you narrated it and we've talked about this but it is something now that i've done this because paul really went downtown intense with the sound collage <laughs> somehow would just make your um, your, uh, you know, like in a screenplay, you describe action, make that more narrative. And then yes. we would have, I guess, a 90 minute podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, we did, yeah, we were, our idea was, and this was before podcasts. I mean, there, there yeah, were a few out there, but we, we, we did this because we, we figured people sort of have lost the ability to read. And so mm-hmm. we said, let's just put this thing down on audio yeah. So, so an executive could like plug a CD into his car and hear and, it. Yeah. And listen to it. So we had sound effects and we had characters and we had narration. So it was like literally like reading the screenplay. So yeah, it, I, I don't think I would ever offer it as an audio, audio treat for someone to listen to because it's pretty, pretty intense that way. You're listening to a lot of, well, then they walk down the street and <laughs> things I like know, that. that. That's true. I mean, I know that Conan's company did their kind of last one for Audible, and it was like a 75 minute scripted podcast. And it was more like a movie. It was mm. about a talking dog and whatever happens, you know, that was the main, main yeah. basic thing. So, the, you know, it's just a billion bits of entertainment. And this is just one other little section of it. And the great thing about audio podcasts as well is, for better or for worse, people are usually doing other things while they yeah. do it, gardening, yeah. working out, driving. And that was another reason where 
we had to make choices of when are we being redundant or when are we making sure that, you know, we had ens the ensign kind of yell out the exposition, then we broad <laughs> say it again. In the beginning, they'll, they'll know when they listen, like how much do, do we describe? And we found that, like me mentioning that they go through the, the time portal, it was more fun to know that the characters don't know what's happening, but we know, which is just a, a device, right? And right. It's, it's a choice. And so with, we made a choice and then we did just before they meet the pirates, we wanted to really make sure that people see it, you know, beforehand. So that, you know, we, we think we broke new ground. We're not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent, but we definitely, I think, I feel like I could advise people. I, I do think the, the, the corporate structure for this is that you write a script, get a lot of celebrity voices to do one take because they, they can't pay anybody, to, you know. Right. And then you do some sound effects and music and then you hope that Ted Sarandos goes, that's a series. Let me buy that. And that's OK. It's just called IP, intellectual property. Otherwise, there's no financial model. So um, that's, you know, we just did something that we we ple we made ourselves really happy. Yeah. The, just the, other, yeah. the other thing that occurred to me when I was listening to the uh, the Pirates um, episode was unlike old radio, because when old radio came out, movies were black and white. The talkies had just come in mm -hmm. and they were kind of about ordinary things. There were some serials like, you know, Flash Gordon and that sort of thing, yeah. but but Flash not Gordon. that much. Yeah. And so the the listening audience had kind of a limited stockpile of things that they would be able to imagine because they'd only seen so much stuff on screen. Now, with everything like the Marvel movies and everything else, yeah. you guys can go kind of crazy. And the idea that a, sh a submarine goes into a time portal isn't something that most audience members have to go, what would that, I don't understand. Because most <laughs> of them go, oh yeah, time portal, cool, okay. Yeah. And so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time being precious about what that, what that experience is supposed to be because everyone's seen something at least somewhat similar. Yeah. And we're, we're saying it before it happens and we do the effect and, you know, we, we kind of, how do we get the submarine back in time? We go, well, we'll have, we'll do an underwater time portal, which I hadn't seen before. Yeah. But we intentionally in a, in a comedic way, which is another sensibility we used for our screenplays was wanting to deal in tropes and, and cliches in a sense. Yes. You know, that's why we just decide, okay, that the pirate, captain is captain jack we just didn't case <laughs> captain jack and captain jack you know so some that's part of the funniness is that everything is sort of nail on the head but twisted um yeah. in some way you know um <laughs> so it, it it's a creative world that is pretty spectacular i have to say you're making almost an audio film if you have the effects in the music you know um it so it's 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 very creative and really fun it's also can be difficult and tedious <laughs> you do it and then you listen to it and it's not that much money it's just time intensive to so-called fix it or make it better yeah and so you, we kept going and going and going um just to make we want to make the, the nerds we call the nerds we call ourselves nerds people <laughs> love marvel i mean you're a you know you love science fiction and, big and nerd, big nerd. fantasy well yeah just loving science fiction the most incredible what's what's more incredible than you know the world's going to blow up and stuff so i love it all too science fiction fantasy so we want to make people who would like that we give them this little treat if they're driving to vegas or something you know yeah they can't yeah. watch a movie or a tv show this is another way to uh, consume all things science fiction-y. And there's a little bit of a, obviously a wink and a nod and a sentimentality with the old fashioned mu music and our character Rod. We couldn't yeah. get the rights and we didn't want to say Serling. So we're only able to say Rod, but I'm Rod, I'm <laughs> back. Can you dig it? You know, it's just a <laughs> sense of him back. And we loved uh, having his voice come in. We put, some vinyl effect on it, layers of treble and made it because we realized we really hear mm. Rod over the television. So we wanted to electrify him all the time in the narration as if he's being, he's coming over a speaker. Interesting. Yeah. To give it that effect. Otherwise my voice is so boring. And we did a little bit of it in the talk show, but it's a little more normal, but it's still, he's mm. got a little 
treble, a little compression. This is all inside baseball for the succotash <laughs> nerds. They're going, what is it, Brian? I don't know. Let's just try it. It's free. <laughs> you click a button, barely any commercials. We have some old fashioned commercials you'll hear in there. Okay. You know, that whole, I'm great. You know, that thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. An homage to that. And, uh, we uh maybe we're channeling quentin tarantino from once upon a time in hollywood (laughs) (laughs) just that old-fashioned commercial yeah Yeah. Yeah. now that now that you kind of uh have i'll say mastered this learning curve about how to do this particular style um uh let's say the show does well uh which i'm sure it will and you guys want to do more episodes you, you anticipate it will be easier with the next batch to be able to go, okay, let's now we we've got everything, you know, set up the way we like it. Let's just plug in the content and go to town and not have to worry about how do we make that sound like something or yes. where are we going to get the music from that sort of yeah. thing. So, yeah. To your point, it's, it's, it's kind of like on Saturday night live. If Kevin and I, we would sort of invent Hans and Franz and the music and their sensibility and how they look. And there was a Hans and Franz joke or a Hans and Franz sketch and then Robert Smigel or Jim Downey or writers who are fans of it could write for it. Mm. You create the paradigm or the template. And the same thing with this now. Now we would, if we do go back, we'd want some like-minded writers who love it. A couple more. We had Michael Gordon uh, help us out immeasurably, but we were a very small group, you know, mm. and for long periods of time. It was just uh, my son, Dex, Dex Carr, Julian Madelich, and myself doing this. So, yeah, we would like to do more. We would like to do um some eight to ten minute episodes we just Mm -hmm. sort of got focused on these three ideas we had one that we almost got to do was called scared astronaut which would be like a (laughs) six or eight minute where he's going out in outer space he's the medal of honor the most macho incredible his name is matt powers and they're like you're almost (laughs) there at houston and and he goes houston i have a problem what is it i'm scared (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, it's the fate of mankind to try to convince him to not be scared. And he's, so there's plenty of funny sci-fi ideas and interesting stories that could be, um, we would do, we, it'd be much quicker, you know, to turn it over yeah. here's our music, you know, here's the kind of sound, for, but we would need a little team to make yeah. it go faster. And would you just use your current stable of voice actors or would you bring other people in other comics, other, actors things like that what we've discovered but hopefully that would go away that because we were writing by recording it essentially yeah. oh let's record it oh it's not quite right we'd have to the the hard part of you know asking bill Hader or martin short can you you know there's no money but could you do it at 11 times <laughs> could you mm-hmm. record for us over and over again but i think as we honed it down and we're more familiar with it uh we'd love to have people who are fans of the show come in and you know do voices for us. That would be awesome. You know, that's cool. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll just kind of see right now. Um, it, we, we made it, we love it. Uh, we think it's really fun. If you get into it, I do recommend listening to it, taking a week off and listening to it again. Mm. There's a density to it, even to me that there's so much information that it's so dense. The second time for me personally, uh, is a lot more fun because I, then I can get kind of chewy i'm not figuring out anything i'm just like what what is cycle bill saying to cannibal you know yeah and you do have to i mean to get the full effect uh and i'll let my listeners know this now is if you're you know when you go download this is try to listen to it on headphones i mean i listened to the sample you gave me the first time around in the car which was very entertaining but then when i I wanted to listen to it again i put headphones on it's like oh there's a whole sort of other level of sound intricacy going on that you just don't hear when you're in your car because yeah. of road noise and all the other stuff. Yeah. Unless you have an amazing stereo, like I have the best is <laughs> headphones. Uh, but if you're driving, if you have a really good stereo, cause I buy a car based on the stereo and then, <laughs> around it. but yeah, they went downtown with the sound. I mean, to the point where we hear these two captains uh, doing diaries and one captain's in a nuclear submarine. So he has a background noise of yeah. metal stuff and then the other guy for a while it was just dense wood but it kind of distracted us so there's a lot of deep sounds mm. collage way distant whatever so it is great for for headphones I yeah think. i mean that, that's that's the sort of thing that you know joe polino who's our producer for our show does you know when we did the um sleeve talkers pilot episode 
you know, he, he very meticulously crafted, you know, different sound environments for each of the, the, um, uh, secret service agents because they were oh, all yeah, calling yeah. calling yeah. in on their radios and so one was in the rose garden and one was oh, in yeah. the lincoln room and so yeah. he had it was it was very intense for him it was just crazy um but that's what you need to do to make these things come to life for people otherwise just read from a script and don't have any sound effects it's one or the other because if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna go for it then go for it like you guys did I audio think- audio candy beyond belief and you need it consistently you know, just just keep. You know, it's 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 like going to a certain a kind of a war. You you to get because people don't listen to these much, and you so to get the it, you know integrated with the concept and really and really live it with the headphones and stuff. It, it's it's a fun ride. You know. Yeah. Sleep yeah. talk. Yeah, you, know, you were the original. I mean, this was really like at the beginning of scripted comedy podcasts, sleep talkers. Yeah, yeah. Does your audience know about it? <laughs> I actually played the pilot for for my audience a couple of years ago when we oh, first yeah. when we first yeah. finished it, and then I, the you know where we were going to get it set up didn't come through, and I sort of said, "Well, I'm going to play it anyway. Just screw it." <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it was because it was the White House and stuff, and then Trump's out, whatever. I don't, you know, you needed a season two, and now Biden's in there, and Trump's yes. off the submarine or something. I don't remember if you had that, but exactly. Trump yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we. <laughs> Yeah, we had, yeah, you, uh, you were the voice of Trump and, uh, also, um, you did a cameo as Obama, uh, yeah. whose dog, yeah. whose dog gets lo- loose on the white house property. Uh, and, uh, you also were Putin. Putin's the one who arrives in the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it was fun. It's a fun concept. It was, it was great. You know? And that was Joe Polino and I outside his house at nine 30 at night, lifting a metal manhole cover off the street and letting it drop back. That was, we go, we had, we need something that sounds like a submarine hatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely a fun area. It's, it, it should exist. Uh, and it, it, they, they are out there. Um, I don't know what makes a hit script, a comedy podcast or what the numbers are or anything like that. Um, but if there's any sense that people want more and team Coco wants to do more, we'll do some more for sure. Just, yeah. yeah fun area to be in you could write one for us or that would be great anybody who likes sci-fi as a writer uh you know uh i told the i did andy breckman he's a famous writer from mm-hmm. snl he's like hey would you keep me in mind for that really isn't that because funny? for certain people to write a short form science fiction story with characters is just very and also it's just liberating we don't have to worry about doing it on a television set that would be yeah. awesome too but that's a lot of that's wholly different than well, just that's budget and everything else that's and write whatever you want 10 million monsters attack now you know exactly just, yeah. exactly Amazing. <laughs> they're on a nuclear submarine going through a time portal you know why because i say they are <laughs> that's it so, so the weird place is going to drop on halloween which is yep. uh somehow even though it's not a halloween story it's kind of perfect I know we'll, we're going to promote, do some promotion. It's not exactly like a Halloween thing, but it just, it has a vibe of, you know, of, of mystery and science fiction, and, you know, yeah. alternative reality. So we just thought that makes it very simple. Be on the East coast after midnight. And then, so when you wake up on the West coast at that morning, it'll be there and mm-hmm. you can watch it at night after you've had a, a, a couple of cocktails and you, and you put the <laughs> lights down, you know, spooky, all the kids are gone. Maybe the yeah. fire is still going. You have a hot toddy and then you put the headphones on and that the, the less noise and stuff you have with the headphones, so you can get really immersive. I would yeah. recommend that because that makes it the most potent i don't recommend cannabis to anybody but if you (laughs) happen to it would not be the worst thing in the world if that's your (laughs) thing of choice but not too much but just enough to go just enough i am in this surreal audio dream state so that's fantastic and in the meantime you're still doing fly on the wall fly on the wall yeah mr Mr. spade dropping every wednesday amazing just uh a whole fleet of guests you guys have had have been amazing. I mean, you just had uh, Paul McCartney on last week's show. Just astounding. I know. That was really, really nice and unexpected. Um, just sort of happened. I was in Wyoming when he, <laughs> that he could do it, you know. And it was a little nerve-wracking up, for, uh, up front because we just didn't want to, didn't know where the parameters were, you know. Mm-hmm. Then when we got into the Beatles, it was really, really fun and interesting. 
you know, we had Lauren Michaels do two episodes. He's kind of like the the mystery guest of the whole podcast because everyone's talking about their interaction with Laura Michaels being yeah. a SNL based podcast. So yeah, that's that's um, that's kind of fun and easy. The scripted ones are more difficult, but the uh, riffing with David Spade is super fun, and you know, just giving it up to people is fun. You know, yeah, because yeah, you were great on the show, and you, this and that. You know, to anybody, just just pointing out if feel good about yourself you got on saturday night live and, and a little bit when you have people on the show it's, it's like the old johnny carson thing where you know he says hey i'm here every every night but those people i'm gonna make them look good and you guys you know you kind of hold them up and say you know talk about their bits i think you and david go to some effort to watch you know some of their sketches you know back on youtube and try and you know bring those to the front to refresh their memories and your memories and the audience's memory which i think is great yeah, I mean, it just seems a natural thing, you know, just we're not competing with them. We just want to create a fun environment and also point out like people uh, like Sherry O'Terry, who just w destroyed us. You're so funny. You know, yeah. Melanie Hutzel from the early 90s was so sweet. And we talked about her Partridge family sketch <laughs> in detail because it was kind of a big, giant thing she was part of and stuff like that. So and, you know, their the emotional underpinning is that for everybody whether you went on to be a movie star or whatever that was for most people they weren't famous didn't have money and they got an snl and so they're as time goes by it's a seminal experience in their memories you still have dreams mm -hmm. about it that you know you're supposed to be out there in 8h you know it's like they've called you and you're you're in the makeup chair still and stuff like that so it's it's indelible in people's minds and one cast go through it together it has a, there's a camaraderie there um you know that yeah you talked about you, you've talked about it with several a number of guests like being in a fraternity or being in like a squad or something like that where everybody has the shared experience even if you're in completely different eras yes of the, of the show because it's been incredibly consistent with lauren michaels there he never changed the theme they for years they always wanted to change got to got to be the tape it's incredibly run exactly the same way as it was in the mm. 70s yeah. you know, so that we know oh it's it's thursday rehearsal what are you doing there or you know dress went too long or you know whatever it is it's a it's a touchstone and a touchstone for society now and what's been, you know what the today show and the snl <laughs> year, we're coming up to the 50th 50th unbelievable that's crazy 50 so anyway so it was uh just it it, it uh it got a little a little following now so we're we're doing enjoying it doing and some cool guests coming up really oh cool. very yeah. nice mm -hmm. i don't suppose you want to tease any of them um potentially bill farrell uh billy farrell or will farrell you know as i call him bill farrell. <laughs> billy farrell okay. billy farrell um is okay. uh right. coming yeah. up we we, we have uh, we have bill burr we have all the burr all the bills nice. you know nice. and many many others so we're getting we're branching out to all kinds of people yeah oh that's great well dana i want to thank you for uh, once again visiting us at succotash uh very excited to see how the the new uh the new show is received i think it's going to be received very well but that's just me well, i've only been doing my show for almost 12 years now so what would i know well in the early days when ted sarandos said you know I, how i know that shows a hit on netflix he goes because i say it is <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the standard is of a hit podcast but if it of uh, scripted so it, we'll, we'll see what that is i don't think it's 10 million views or anything like that but we'll see just see if the community of, of sci-fi fans go yeah we'd like to have more of those when we're yeah. driving around or hanging out at night we when we tired of watching something so we'll, we'll see but uh we we love it and so and we made it so that's just it's good to finish something to completion and get it released very sad right well i think in the sea of of sound casts um it's something that pokes up out of the water uh you know which is it's so difficult to get noticed because there are so many out there so it's got you attached to it it's got a very unique premise um it's incredibly well produced it's got the power of Conan behind it in terms of getting it out there. So I think it stands every good chance and I've heard it and I love it. So, so that's what it's I had to say. It's so you, cause I've, I've written two movies with you and you've been, <laughs> you know, you're uh, I don't know how you describe someone who's been involved in comedy in so many different ways for, for so long. 
you know, I mean, the amount of movies you've written with comedians and stuff. So I like that you like it. That's important to me, you know, and you, you know me and you know what, what I what's going on. So yep. you could probably chuckle, you know, there he is doing that thing, you know, <laughs> but Dex and Julian, um, yeah, it really worked, worked incredibly hard. It was fun to see people as madly tenacious as I was. Well, we're, that's the we're gonna record that, it again, boys. <laughs> that's the other exciting thing for me from a personal standpoint is having known Dex and Tom for since they were little kids mm -hmm. and seeing them come into their own with this stuff. I remember the movies we were just talking about that we were we wrote. I still remember you had a, a car, you know, crayon drawings that Tom would do of his impression of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's right. And, you know, uh, it was kind of fun having, you know, young men in their late 20s, basically. And then Michael Gordon from Conan, who was in, he and I in our 60s. So and it was like listening to them and they were listening to me. And so it was a real collaboration. So it has something that might just kind of incidentally span a big range of audience, you know. Yeah. Yeah. People Very in cool. their 20s. So we'll, we'll just see. But thank you for having yeah. me. <laughs> absolutely we'll have you back again and, uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much tomorrow night <laughs> thank okay. you. all right we'll we'll talk to you soon now i believe as of this taping that is the very first interview that dana has had for the weird place in front of what is sure to be a barrage of press for it in the next couple of weeks so bam succotash exclusive remember that it drops on halloween coming out of the Team Coco Fun Factory and available all over the place. For those of you who might be interested in seeing those two movies that he and I were talking about that he and I wrote, we can show you the scripts if you show us about mm, a million bucks a piece. Why so high? Well, because there are two of us and we have to split the money, dummy. Now, if you'd like to follow Dana on his socials, he's at Dana Carvey on Twitter and at the Dana Carvey on Instagram. Well, that convo ran a bit over our usual time, but we would be remiss not to take a peek into the Tweet Sack. For it is inside the Tweet Sack. Tweety, are you going to do that every time I say Tweet Sack? It's inside the Tweet Sack that we find the social media handles of those who have used our handle, at Succotash Show, in their socials to give us a virtual wave hello. And so we offer a kind shout out thusly. Jock Doc Podcast, Richard E. Grant, yeah, Covet, Rubber Duck Canuck, 929, Smosey, Kevin Lordy, Miss Mantha, Rob Wilkerson, Hidden Figure, Felicia Mantia, Lily Sullivan, Miss Fitz Scully, L. Hummingbird, The Manic Pixie Weirdo Podcast, DAPF Podcast and DAPF Pod Annalise, Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast, Trash Podcast, Primetime Justice, The Legal Geeks, Saim Hosen. I'm not sure if that's right. S A I M. Saim Hosen. Charlotte Kirchner, Pod Dad Out, Adam. I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam, Alexa Perez, Aya Bonardi. Noel Fagbile. Yeah, that's the name. It's on there. Fascination Street. Combat Radio. Judith Rose Schwartz. Bridget Bigby. Nate DeFort. Hazel Gerber. Laura Saner. Yeah, Laura Saner. That's right. That's that's the better half of our other host, Tyson Saner. Monica Hamburg. Sydney Stepovich. Stevie Jantz. And Poopa Lupa over on SoundCloud. Thanks, Poopa Lupa. If you'd like me to shout you out during the Tweet Sack segment, just use our at Succotash Show handle on your Twitter or Instagrams, or both. And if I see it, we'll throw your handle in the next time around. Well, that's about all she wrote for Succotash Epi 326. Thanks again to Dana Carvey for joining us and telling us all about his new soundcast, The Weird Place. I will put links to it up after it drops on Halloween, unless I manage to get a hold of those links beforehand. Otherwise, you'll have to return here to our, our blog site at SuccotashShow.com, and those links will be up there. But it should not be too hard to find. The show is, uh, well, it's by Team Coco, so just hang outside the virtual stage door over at Team Coco. When no one's looking, just slip inside. 
Remember to catch our action next week for Epi 327 and your erstwhile host Tyson Saner right here in this very same feed. In the meantime, if you should find yourself struggling to get free of the swamp reeds, the mud, and the skeeters while drowning in the fetid waters of Lake Okeechobee in Florida, a giant gator coming at you with jaws agape, and someone whizzes by on one of those swamp boats with a big fan on the back shouting, Have you heard anything good lately? Won't you please pass the succotash? <laughs> You've been listening to Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast, with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Suckatash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. That number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Suckatash. Suckatash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Suckatash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Suckatash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.